In this episode, we'll be tackling the roof vents, and I'll show you how to go from this to this. Welcome back to this ongoing series on the renovation of my 1949 Spartan Manor 25 camper trailer. At first, I thought I'd just get passive vents like the trailer already has, but then I thought it'd be better to just go with one of these motorized ones that can help move the air around a lot better. I also really like that this one will close automatically if it senses rain. I think it's supposed to be a rain sensor. Getting ready to take these out today. There are three of these. I'm going to replace the forward and the aft one with an electric fan. And then the central one, I'm going to put an AC unit there. To get this out, I'm going to just have to go up onto the roof and undo all these screws. There's the forward vent, the central vent, and the aft vent. And you can see how easily this deflects. I'm just really worried about denting this. Luckily, I have an awesome neighbor named Scott who thought of this way to put a plank over the trailer. Huh? What do you think? That was pretty level to me. Scott's attaching this board to make sure that the plank doesn't slide through the ladder. I can't see that going anywhere. <laughs> a little bit of rubber up there to protect the roof. Oh, hey, easy access. Come right on, you comfortable? Yeah. It's coming off pretty easily. I soon discovered that I could undo the screws without taking any of the sealant off. And then I used the edge of the putty knife to cut around the edges so that I could pry the vent up. And all that goo that you see there in the middle, that's the old butyl tape, which we'll be renewing when we put in the new vent. Now I'm just using the scraper to pull up as much of that butyl tape as I can. So yeah, it's quite a mess. And up here there's a patch of some kind. This stuff here is really thick. I was trying to scrape off as much of the silver sealant as I could because I didn't want to turn it all into dust with the wire wheel. All right, it's looking a lot better. Got it all down to bare metal. Not thrilled about this patch here, so I'll go look at it from underneath. So here's the mess of holes that the patch above is covering. I assumed this would fit right in. Unfortunately, the new vents are 14 and 3 16ths of an inch, and the old vents were just 14. And so we have a little bit of gap there, a little bit there, and then we're missing it by a good eighth of an inch there. I'm gonna have to drill out those rivets and those there, just to scoot this back and gain about an eighth of an inch. And at this point, I'm still hoping I don't have to mess with the patch but I was wrong. So here I am giving in and drilling out the two dozen rivets. Got a few of those to get off. Measuring to make sure I've moved it back far enough. Drilling holes for the new rivets. So now I'll stick this one inch rivet in there. And filing back the sheet metal that now hangs over. And another test fit. Ah, just this back corner. So now it's not fitting this way. Drilling out the rivets, holding in the side bracket. I'm gonna take out the rivets I just put in. Putting rivets in the new holes for the bracket. So I've moved it, you can see that much. Let's file this down and see if the vent fits. At last final rivets, cleaning up all the goo from the patch, and finishing it off with some acetone. Now I'm applying the new butyl tape, which has this waxy paper backing because the stuff is really sticky. In putting the patch back on, I couldn't tell if all the rivet holes were lining up, so I used the drill bit to make it line up. With the patch all sealed up, now I'm putting the butyl tape around the perimeter of the hole where the vent will sit on it. And make sure to push any joints in the butyl tape together to keep it leak free. Because this butyl tape is so sticky, really make sure that the vent is in the right position before you start pushing it down. There we go. The butyl tape is pretty thick, so I'm trying to compress it and spread it out between the flange and the roof before I start securing the vent with screws. I soon found I couldn't reach all the screw holes very well with the vent closed. 
you can see there's a bit of a gap. I think some of that's the butyl tape. So what I'm going to try and do is just put the screws in and around and tighten them up bit by bit and see if it cinches it down. I still couldn't reach the forward screw holes, so I had to undo the roof end further to access them. Uh, I've just had this screw head break off as I was tightening it. All right, there's the offending screw. Success. Got a new one in, and they're all tightened down fairly well. And there's a bit of a gap here on this side because that is there, so I'll just really seal it up really well. Just putting the vent back together. Those are locked back in the channels. It always surprises me how many more tools you end up needing for a job than you think. And now I'm closing the vent so that I can more easily put the sealant around the edges. I got this lap sealant online. It was one of the recommended products when I was buying that. I wasn't exactly sure how this quote self-leveling sealant would work, but it seemed pretty much like any caulking. Wherever there was a gap between the vent and the roof, I really made sure to squeeze a lot of sealant in there to try and make it waterproof. You can see I put a dollop on each of the screw heads, and I also did the joints around the aluminum patch. <laughs> I got paint on him by accident for a little dog. All right, here's the aft vent. The aft vent went a lot more smoothly than the first vent did, in large part because I had accepted the fact that I had to make the hole bigger. I won't show you the whole process because of course it's pretty much the same, although there were a couple small differences. On the aft vent, I had to cut away a lot more of the sheet metal. I tried to file, I tried using tin snips, but they can't reach in. And in the end, I just had to use an angle grinder with the cutoff disc. I would also recommend drilling small pilot holes for the screws that hold the vent down. I have this temporarily wired in. Let's test this fan out. That's super quiet. And it does come with a remote control. Okay, <laughs> now I hear it. <laughs> Lid down. Oh, okay. You have to hold it. Here's a quick test of the rain sensor. <laughs> With the forward and aft vents installed and the AC unit mounted, the roof is looking a lot better. Overall, this part of the project cost about $536 and took about 13 hours. Thanks for joining us and hope to see you next time.